What's up guys? So today we're going to be taking a look at what I would consider to be the best pre-built gaming PC lineup on the market right now in 2023 and that is the NZXT player PC series. And we're going to walk through from their $1,000 pre-built all the way up to their $4,000 pre-built and see how does it compare against the rest of the market competition at all of those different price points. So let's just jump into the video and start out with that $1,000 pre-built. So the NDXT $1,000 build is the Player One. The Player One comes in at $1,049 and it comes in the H5 Flow case. And we get an RTX 3050 and an i5-12400F, um, which maybe isn't in par or up to par with the other competition out there at this price point in terms of specs. Um, but you're getting a lot of other nice features. So we get 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz DDR4, a 500 gig NVMe SSD, um, and that is paired with a B660 motherboard, which you're not gonna be able to overclock down the line, either on this 12400F or if you upgrade it, your CPU in the future. Um, but I think that's fine for this price point. We also get a deep cool Gamax uh, cooler, so an air cooler, um, and we also get a 650 watt 80 plus gold power supply. So there's definitely room for more upgrades with this build. And then like I mentioned, the H5 flow and two years of parts and labor on the warranty. But if we compare this to the competition, which in my mind, the best under $1,000 pre-built, which is the Legion Tower 5 Gen 6. I reviewed this PC not that long ago, uh, so you can definitely take a look at that video. It'll be down in the description. Overall for $900. So I mean, this PC is originally priced at $1,400, but for the most part, I've been able to find this thing for 900 bucks pretty consistently, either from Lenovo or on Best Buy. Uh, but you're getting a Ryzen 7 5800, so far and away a better CPU than the 12400F. And you're also getting an RTX 3060 with another, you know, same 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 megahertz memory, a slightly smaller SSD at 256 gigs, but you do get a one terabyte HDD to kind of make up for that for your game storage. A 650 watt power supply, just like the NZXT, an air cooler, and pretty much everything else except for the the warranty is cut down to one year. So you're getting a much better CPU and GPU, and everything else is pretty much the same. Now it's not as maybe upgradable and customizable as the NZXT, being that it is built on the H5 Flow case. Um, Everything inside the NZXT build is pretty much off the shelf, whereas Lenovo, you're going to get some Lenovo branded uh, hardware, like a Lenovo motherboard um, and maybe a Lenovo graphics card, things like that, which maybe aren't as easy to upgrade down the line. But overall, this should be a very upgradable PC, very comparable to the Player One at a much cheaper price point. But let's step up the price to $1,500 with the NZXT Player Two. And the Player 2 comes with an RTX 3070, and this time is built on the H5 Elite case. Um, it comes with a Ryzen 5 5600X, so six cores, 12 threads of performance uh, that are definitely overclockable. Uh, we also get the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070, of course, 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz DDR4, and now a one terabyte NVMe SSD. Um, in terms of the motherboard, we're getting a B550 motherboard, a Kraken 120 millimeter cooler. So not the best in terms of cooling, but it should be fine for 5600X. You can see the rear mounted exhaust, smaller 120 mil cooler. Um, and then in terms of a power supply, again, still a 650 watt gold uh, power supply. So you can definitely make upgrades to both the GPU and the CPU down the line if you do so uh, see fit. And you still get that two year parts and labor warranty. So overall, a very, very nice build and an extremely good looking build with the H5 Elite case. Now, if we take a look at the competition, again, we kind of get beat out by what's out there on the market. So this is just a, a your regular iBuy Power Trace MR gaming desktop. Maybe not the best looking case, maybe not the best airflow out of this case. Um, you're also not gonna get maybe the peak off the shelf hardware that you probably are with the NZXT Player Series, but you're getting an i7-12700F, so a much better CPU, a lot more cores, a lot more threads, and you're also getting that RTX 3070 and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. So from the looks of it, probably the NZXT beats it out on looks and probably beats it out on cooling as well. But overall, you're getting much better hardware, except for the GPU in this build with that CPU upgrade and at a cheaper price. So with the sale on Best Buy for this PC, you're getting at a much cheaper price 
uh, but I still might go for the couple hundred extra dollars and get the player too, just because you're, you're getting a better overall platform that you're going to be able to upgrade down the line a lot easier. The parts and labor warranty is also really nice. So uh, maybe still a win for the player too. But if we step it up one price point further to $2,000, we take a look at the player two prime. Now we've stepped up to a 4070 Ti. So now we're taking a look at a RTX 4070 Ti with a Ryzen 7 5800X. Now this is really, really tough to beat at this price point. $2,000 for the 4070 Ti, which pretty much beats out like a 3090 at this point, is an extremely good uh, setup. You're also now getting 32 gigs of DDR4 memory and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. We also get a 750 watt gold power supply, uh, which means even more upgrades down the line. So let's say a 4080 um, or a better CPU at that point as well. Still a B550 motherboard. Might have been nice to see an X570 um, just for some more uh, overclocking capabilities. And we also get a water cooled 240 mil AIO. Interesting that they went with a gigabyte Aorus Water Force instead of their own NDXT crack and cooler. A little curious for me, but yeah. Just a, a interesting side point, and still that two-year parts and labor warranty with the H5 Elite case. So overall, I mean, this build looks awesome. The H5 Elite is a great-looking case. You get the 4070 Ti, you get the top-mounted water cooler. Overall, looks like a fantastic build. Um, and at that $2,000 price point, it's also relatively cheap uh, in comparison to the competition. So if we take a look at something like Build Redux, and this is the Build Redux Level 2, kind of one of their standard pre-builds, which you can, of course, change things around. Everything can be upgraded or swapped out on these builds. But with this build, we're getting an i7-12700F, uh, pretty much comparable to that 5800X. 32 gigs of RAM, again, the same. Uh, again, a 240 uh, millimeter AIO. Uh, Cooler Master Case, a B760 motherboard. Uh, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 instead of a 4070 Ti, uh, 700 watt power supply, one terabyte NVMe SSD. It's a very, very similar build outside of swapping out the 4070 Ti for a 4070. So, I mean, yeah, you're spending $1,978 from Build Redux for a 4070 versus $1,999 for a 4070 Ti. Have to give this one to NZXT. And the look of the NZXT, in my mind, definitely beats out the Cooler Master styling of the Build Redux builds. And I mean, a lot of the Build Redux builds look the same just because they're building them on the same platform and just swapping out the internals. So overall, I mean, I just really like the look of the Player 2 Prime versus the Build Redux build. And if we step it up one step further to 2,500, now we're in the Player 3 territory. And with the Player 3, we're looking still at a 4070 Ti, which is a little bit interesting. I'm surprised they didn't step it up to a 4080, but NZXT has made a lot of nicer choices when it comes to CPU. So now we're getting an i7-13700KF, 16 cores, 24 threads, really, really nice CPU. Uh, we're also getting, of course, the 4070 Ti still, a 32 gig, 3200 megahertz kit of DDR4. Would have been really nice to see DDR5 on this build. They do have a Z690 motherboard, so they probably went with the DDR4 version just so they could keep all the builds using DDR4. Probably cheaper to buy that in bulk versus having some with DDR5 and some with DDR4. But I would have liked to see DDR5 on this build. Uh, we also do get a terabyte NVMe SSD. Uh, the Kraken X63 cooler, so a 280 mil cooler. Again, interesting now that they went back to a Kraken cooler versus that GeForce or the, the Gigabyte cooler on the last build. And still 750 watt gold power supply. And now we're stepping up to an NZXT H7 flow. So we went from the H5 Elite with the previous build to an H7 flow, much more airflow focused. You can fit up to two 360 mil radiators in this thing, or you can put, you know, six three uh 120 mil fans in this bad boy so it's a very much of a bigger mid-size case so you can fit a lot more cooling get a lot more performance out of the case like the h7 flow versus the h5 elite so in this case they're definitely more airflow focused and a lot probably dictating more temperature focus versus the previous player two prime but if we take a look at the competition 
Now we're looking at the iBuyPower Y40, and this is built on the Height Y40 case, which is a subsidiary of iBuyPower. So a really, really nice setup with this case. In my mind, a little bit nicer styling than the H7 Flow, and we're getting the exact same hardware as the NZXT one. Um, so we're getting, again, i7-13700KF, a 4070Ti, a one terabyte NVMe SSD. Overall, it's pretty much the exact same specs, but we also do get a one terabyte hard drive, still 32 gigs of RAM. Um, overall, it's a really, really nice build with some not so on par, uh, not so on par reviews for this build. So again, not a lot of people are going out and spending $2,500 on a pre-built gaming desktop at that price point. You might be better off just building one yourself. But if you did want to go out and, and buy a pre-built at this price point, um, again, not a lot of people are doing it. And some people had some really bad experiences either with the, the GPU just not outputting anything um, or the case coming uh, broken. So just some interesting one-off experiences with this build. And again, not a lot of people bought it. So that's why you have two five-star and three zero-star because people got dead on arrival PCs at that one-star and then other people got some really, really nice functioning PCs at those five-star reviews. Um, again, now only a one-year parts and labor warranty versus two-year with NZXT. So that's also a weigh-in for your decision if you're going to buy the NZXT or this iBuyPower build. But again, same specs at a cheaper price point. And now we're going to kind of the king of all pre-built gaming PCs at this point in time, which is a 13900K and a 4090. And that is the Player 3 Prime for NZXT. So the Player 3 Prime now comes in the H7 Elite case, which looks fantastic. We had a 13900KF, 24 cores, 32 threads of max performance at this point in time. The RTX 4090, we now get 64 gigs of 3200 megahertz DDR4, which is again, interesting, not going DDR5 and probably the same Z690 motherboard as the other player three case or, or build. Uh, now we get two one terabyte NVMe SSDs, which is really nice as well. One probably has a game drive and one more for your Windows install. Uh, we also get a 1000 watt power supply, which is 80 plus gold rated, which is really, really nice. And in terms of cooling, we get the Gigabyte Aorus Water Force 280. Again, interesting how they're going back and forth between Gigabyte and just NZXT Kraken coolers. Uh, the Z63 cooler versus the Water Force 280, maybe there's some performance difference and that's why they're putting this in their higher end prime builds or maybe it's just a way to differentiate. Uh, if you have a Kraken cooler, maybe that's kind of your standard uh, builds and then the prime builds get these Gigabyte coolers. Not really sure in terms of that perspective, but overall, either way, it's a 280 mil cooler cooling that 13900 KF. Would have been nice at this price point to probably see like a 360 millimeter cooler in there uh, just to be able to you know, make the most of the 13900 KF. There's been a lot of heat issues with that CPU and being able to pump that out with a 360 mil AIO would have been nice just to get a little bit more performance. So overall, a really, really nice build. H7 Elite is a good looking case. Um, and overall, yeah, no complaints, but the price point is hefty at $3,900. And when we take a look at the competition, this is probably in my mind, mainly the number one build out there that you can get for that, you know, $4,000 king of all pre-built gaming PCs with the 4090. And that is the Corsair Vengeance i7400. So this thing comes with a 3,900K, no KF an RTX 4090, two terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD, and the 64 gigs of DDR5 5600 megahertz that I was so desperately wanting in some of the previous NZXT builds. Um, we also then get a Z690 motherboard, a 1000 watt ATX 80 plus gold power supply. So overall, this is pretty much the same build as the NZXT one, but we're going with a K series CPU uh, and not a KF, and we're also getting DDR5 memory. In terms of the cooling, it is a slight step down with an H100i cooler, um, which is a 240 millimeter cooler versus the 280. Again, would have been nice to three, see a 360 mil cooler in these builds, but it's really nice having that DDR5 versus DDR4 and the 3900K versus the KF. So in terms of styling, it's going to be up to you whether you like the Corsair case, you like the NZXT case. You're probably going to get a little bit better airflow with this build versus the NZXT one. 
But either way, this is an awesome build. The NZXT one is also an awesome build. So it's really kind of up to you whether you want to spend, if you're, if you're going to spend $4,000, it's pretty much the same price between the two. You've you got like a $50 difference between them at this point in time, either less or more. So either way, you're getting an awesome build. It's just whether you want to spend $4,000 or you want to build one yourself. But going through all of these NZXT builds, so the player one, the player two, the player two prime, the player three, and the player three prime, they're all fantastic builds that are definitely competitive with all of the competition out there on the market. The only one that's slightly disappointing is the player one having the RTX 3050 instead of a 3060 at that $1,000 price point, which is why I definitely would recommend going with something like the Legion Tower 5. But overall, all of the other builds are pretty much at the top of the class when it comes to specs and very close when it comes to price. So if you're looking for a pre-built gaming PC in 2023, definitely take a look at the NZXT player series of PCs. Um, if you have any questions or comments about any of these builds, leave those down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, get subscribed to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.